Hello everybody, I wanted to give you a little bit of an update on my ITP thesis to let you know how that's going. Now what I'm creating is, I'm calling it a network filter box. It's a physical box that has a bunch of different switches on it, maybe five to eight switches on it, that have a different effect on your network connection. And the idea is that people can kind of come up to this in sort of an installation setting and play with the switches and try out their network connection and see if they can figure out what the different effects of each of the switches are. The switches are going to be labeled, they're going to have kind of strange names to them and they'll be able to turn a switch on or turn three switches on, pull up a page and see how it affects that page to, you know, to explore the idea of network filtration and the, and the sort of ideas and the issues around them. Now I've been doing a lot of work on it and I've done a lot of progress on it, but I, I ran into some issues and I wanted to talk about it. So now my first strategy really was to create a, a custom router. So if, if this represents the internet here, I was going to have a router. This was going to be the box with the switches on it and it was going to pass the internet through to a bunch of different computer terminals like this. And so when a switch was flipped upwards, it would filter the traffic to the different computers appropriately. So I used a, a software, open source Python software called uh, MITM proxy or man in the middle proxy. And it worked all right. I was able to get through, I, I was able to like make changes to pages that were coming through, but it would always mess up the, the HTML structure. Um, so I, I would have the, the, the HTML being fetched and it would just like, it, there was always some problem or another where the HTML structure would get messed up and the rendering of the page would just look kind of bonkers and it just wasn't right. And I wanted to make sure that when someone brought up a page, it looked mostly the way they were used to. So there was a problem happening right here that I was trying to get around. And I tried uh, running things through uh, a, a, a Python library called Beautiful Soup, which lets you kind of mess around with HTML structure. And it, it was very, very much aware of the structure. And I got it working pretty well with HTML soup, but the problem was is that there were still these like weird errors that would happen. And if the page wasn't formatted exactly right, it would, it would throw an error out on this side and it would mess everything else up and it just didn't work. So I'm now taking a different approach that kind of fakes the whole operation. So the idea now is that if this is the internet here, and we have this sort of network filter box here. Let's say this is a switch that's up uh, and we have got uh, a router, a separate router that's here. So this connects the internet. Now the network filter box also connects through the router and then each computer connects to the router as well. So these are my computer terminals here. Let's say there are three terminals set up in the installation uh, where people can browse the web. Now what happens now is I put on each of these a Chrome extension called Tamper Monkey uh, on each of these, Tamper Monkey. And what Tamper Monkey does is it has code on it that I've written that will check the network filter box every time a page is fetched and says, okay, what are the state of the switches? And then, so it checks every time. And then the box will reply with, okay, this, these switches are in this condition, which go back. And then Tamper Monkey on the side of the client makes the appropriate change to the page. This has a few advantages because uh, for one, SSL, the, the browser to server encryption isn't a problem anymore. You can't get in between. Uh, you know, there are some tricks around getting in between, but it made it very, very difficult that if any, any site that used encryption, which encrypted from the browser right out to the server, uh, you know, I couldn't get in between it. And if I did, it would mess other things up. This way, it's after the, pa the page is loaded and rendered that it's checking, or while it's, while it's rendering it, it's checking for, okay, what kind of changes do I make to the page? And then brings back. Hopefully though, to the user, it's gonna seem like this is what's happening. And I'm gonna do that by the way I set it up but this is really the true thing that's happening. And I hopefully this will be the, the, the right approach to take to it. Uh, I have a, vi a bit of a physical mini prototype I'm making. I'm making a mini version that's USB only that has switches on it like this. It's fun to play with these switches. 
uh, and I this is a USB version for just a single computer so that I can play with the ideas, play with the software and see how it works before I build the whole thing. So that's the update on my thesis. It's coming along really, really nicely. The software is coming on, along nicely. I'm looking forward to building the big one. I just need to finish building this mini one here. As you can see, it's still just kind of a shell. Anyway, I'll have more videos for you uh, all week long. Uh, please subscribe, please follow me on Twitter. You'll see more updates. And thank you for subscribing, thank you for liking, thank you for commenting. Have a great day.